Hello Tech World, this is Tech Thoughts, and in this short video we're going to be looking at the capabilities of the Synology DS1815 Plus. I've got two empty bays here that I haven't populated with normal spindle disks, and instead I've got these two extra SSDs laying around, Samsung type, and we'll go ahead and throw those in. Uh, if you're familiar with Synology, the caching is going to be one drive is going to be used for write cache, and one drive is going to be used for read cache, and we'll go ahead and throw those in right now and set that up and see if it makes a considerable difference on our NAS performance on this DS1815+. Plus. Alright, so with those two SSDs loaded into the extra two base slots of the Synology unit, we should now be able to log into the Disk Station Manager and drop down into Storage Manager. And we should see, if we look at the HDD SSDs, we should now see the two SSDs that I had laying around, uh, in normal condition, but not initialized. If we look at the SSD cache, they have not been configured yet. So before we go ahead and set up those two SSDs and SSD cache, let's run a few tests uh, to see, uh, or kind of benchmark the Synology unit to see if these two dedicated SSDs in cache mode are actually gonna make a real world difference. So I'm gonna be using IO meter. And what I've done here is I've set up uh, some 4K tests with 100% read, uh, kind of a split between read and write, and also a 100% read, all using non-sequential data tests which is kind of the same setup if you look on the Synology SSD caching white paper is how they've configured their testing. So if we go ahead and kick this off uh, and running a 20 gig test file against the Synology unit. So again, this is 0% read, so this is a full write and we're pulling in about 112 IOPS just on the native RAID 6 of the Synology DS1815+. Plus. So with just writes seeing about anywhere from the low 100s to about 112. If we hop over to a mix of read and write, pulling somewhere in the neighborhood of about 107 to 110 IOPS on read and write. And if we execute the final test, which is just reads, we go a little bit lower into the low 100s on our IOP return. But in each of those 4K tests with 100% random, we are seeing between 100 and 112 IOPS. So let's go ahead and kill these tests and we can hop back into our disk station manager and actually set up SSD caching and see if that makes a difference uh, when we test again. So with the SSD cache menu up, we can go ahead and click create. And since we have dedicated two SSD bays, we can go ahead and enable a read write cache. So we'll go ahead and click next. We'll associate this with the only volume that's on this particular Synology unit, which is a RAID 6. It will allow both drives to be part of that SSD cache. The only option we have with those two disks is RAID 1, so we'll go ahead and select that. And we're going to enable the max amount of cache. Now do keep in mind that a certain portion of your Synology's memory is going to be dedicated to that SSD cache. Uh, the advisement here is 416 kilobytes of memory per every 1 gig of cache, and it gives us the required memory of 96 megs, which isn't a significant amount. But keep this in mind uh, that you're going to be chewing up some of your Synology's RAM uh, as you add more gigabytes to that cache. I'm going to leave the skip sequential I.O. Uh, enabled. Your Synology unit is already going to do a really great job when it comes to sequential data, and the SSD cache is not going to provide significant benefits in that regard. So it also increases the lifespan of your SSD if you don't engage uh, the cache with sequential I.O. So do some research uh, about the appropriate setting for your environment, but unless you're engaging backup applications like it advises here, Sequential I.O. enablement is not really a thing that you need to be worried about. So we'll go ahead and leave that checked as skipping sequential I.O. and apply. This is going to give us a couple of confirmations here, just letting us know that uh, SSD caching is going to be uh, disabled if it goes to a de degraded state. And this is also going to stop all Synology services temporarily while it enables this cache. Click I understand and click OK. And that's mounting our SSD cache volume now. And in a short moment, we should see this go to ready state. Notice that as it starts mounting, we start seeing some real-time data about the usage of the actual SSD cache, which is pretty cool. So I'll leave this up while we do some additional testing so we can see some metrics pour in 
uh, regarding engagement of that SSD cache. Okay, our SSD cache is in normal mode now and ready to be engaged. So again, same setup test with 4K, uh, writes first, and then a mix of read and write, and then just read. And again, this is all random data, uh, again, because sequential data is not going to engage the cache. So I'll go ahead and click start on the test. And as that disk starts to ramp up in the IO meter, we can see the uh, cache usage starting to rise. And also we can see the cache is being engaged in real time. So it'll be interesting to see what the actual results of this is going to be. Okay, so with just writes, we're seeing uh, a significant drop in performance from about 112 IOPS down to 61 IOPS. Our cache size is increasing, and I have a theory that as more data got loaded into the cache, it, we should see that IOP meter rise and then eventually eclipse and go over the original 112. But it looks like as that cache uh, isn't fully engaged yet, we're seeing a pretty significant hit in the overall performance. So we'll hop over to the next test. Our cache size is continuing to grow, but we're still seeing less IOPS than we did without the cache in place. On the read-write test, down to the low 70s versus the 107 to 110 that we were receiving previously, which is the RAID 6 engaged. And we'll go ahead and hop over and finish up that last test, which is just reads. And as we've seen in those previous tests, this is hovering in the 60 to 70 range. Again, much lower than we had originally on the just normal Western Digital Red spindle disks. I think as additional data continues to be loaded into the cache and as that cache size continues to grow over here on the left, I think that we what we expect to see is as that grows, the I.O. Uh, performance of this would increase and eventually eclipse the original performance metrics that we were pulling down in the 100 to 107 range. Okay, so the results from the initial testing on the 4K with the SSD cache turned on were pretty abysmal, to be honest. And so I ran it a couple more times, and you can see now over on the left here that the uh, entire test file is now loaded into the SSD cache. And now check out uh, what I run this what kind of results we're getting. So phenomenal results. Uh, triple what we were getting before uh, with just the RAID 6 spindle disks inside. So this makes perfect sense to me. When the actual files are loaded into cache and when the algorithm that Synology is using identifies files uh, to be loaded into cache and you're engaging those via the cache, you're going to see phenomenal performance uh, coming out of that. But what's concerning to me is that at least temporarily, we saw a pretty significant drop in performance even from the normal RAID 6. And so what I'd like you guys to do is uh, test this on your own Synology devices if you're adding your, in your own SSD cache and see if you're also uh, encountering a performance hit on just the normal access uh, for I.O. Uh, running the I.O. meter uh, with a full random access. I think the takeaway from this is that while the Synology unit will eventually learn and properly cache the right files, you can't just slap two SSDs into the Synology unit and expect an immediate return on in performance gain. You need to understand your workloads, whether or not you're using CIFS versus an iSCSI LUN, uh, and again, what type of workloads, like are you running VMs or are you just accessing a file share, and then get some realistic expectations about what you're going to get back from that cache. As you can see from the performance today, uh, not an immediate return. I'm going to monitor this over the next couple of weeks as I'm engaging it on a day-to-day -day basis. And look forward to updates on the tech.info blog as I uh, report back on my ongoing usage of this SSD cache. Thanks for watching.